Welcome back to an introduction to basic concepts of maintenance and reliability. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the remaining three questions of reliability-centered maintenance. The first four questions of RCM discussed about the functions, functional failures, failure modes, and failure effects. The fifth question of RCM asks, in what ways does each failure matter? Or in other words, what are the consequences of each failure? In the context of reliability-centered maintenance, consequences have three categories. These categories are safety or environmental consequences, operational consequences, and non-operational consequences. Safety and environmental consequences are related to health and safety of people and well-being of environment. For example, leakage of a pressurized line carrying hazardous gas or liquid poses risk to environment and health of people surrounding it. Operational consequences are related to production and quality of output. For example, failure of a hydraulic press machine in a sheet metal factory poses risk of losing the volume of output or maybe the quality of punching the sheets. Non-operational consequences are the consequences that neither fall under safety and environment nor under operational consequences. They don't directly impact the safety of the plant or the environment or the production. Non-operational consequences are consequences involving only the cost and effort needed in repairing the system. For example, failure of a genset whose standby is available does not halt production. Why? Because the standby genset will take over the load. Therefore, no hindrance in operations will be experienced. So the fifth step in RCM is to work out all the different types of failure consequences you could face in your plant. The sixth question of RCM asks, what can be done to predict or prevent each failure? This question constitutes the sixth step of the RCM process. It is about developing predictive and preventive maintenance programs. By this stage, you have already worked out all the different types of failures, failure modes, their effects, and their consequences. So now's the time to critically analyze the equipment in your plant to find the preventive and predictive maintenance actions needed to save yourself from the troubles that you have just discovered in the first five steps. The sixth step is where maintenance checklists and schedules are developed. Finally, the seventh question of RCM is a natural progression from the sixth question. It asks, what should be done if a suitable proactive task cannot be found, where proactive task refers to a preventive or predictive maintenance task. It is quite a probability that you would not be able to predict or prevent each and every type of failure. Therefore, RCM process directs you to develop an action plan for such failures as well. In RCM, when a failure can neither be prevented nor be predicted, a default action needs to be selected. There are three types of default actions to choose from in such a case. These are failure finding, redesign, and run to failure.
or RTF. Failure finding refers to scheduled tasks by maintenance personnel in which they actively look for presence of failures. Generally, failure finding tasks involve checking the function of safety and protective devices. For example, a pressure relief valve is checked if it does not relieve pressure at the specified pressure reading. Since these tasks are checking proactive and safety devices for correct function, they are also known as functional checks. The second type of default action is redesign. Redesign of the equipment's component or redesign of the process is suitable when a suitable failure finding task is unable to be found. It involves modifying the equipment to either make the failure predictable or preventable or to make it possible to have a failure finding task for it. Redesign is opted in the light of financial feasibility of failure versus the cost of redesign. The third type of default action is called run to failure or simply RTF. It is simply letting the equipment fail. Surprising, isn't it? However, this option is viable only if the consequences of failure are non-serious and the cost of other default actions is more than the cost of failure. For example, the light fixture inside an electrical cabinet doesn't need replacement until it fails. This is a run to failure default action. To summarize the seven questions and the seven steps of RCM, they include functions, which include performance standards in operating contexts. Second, functional failures, which are the ways in which the equipment could fail. Failure modes, which are causes behind functional failures. Effects, that is, the failure effects. Consequences, which could be safety, environmental, operational, or non-operational consequences. Proactive tasks, which include preventive and predictive maintenance programs. And finally, default actions, which include failure finding, redesign, and run to failure or RTF tasks. So in this way, the seven questions of reliability-centered maintenance constitute the seven steps of RCM implementation. By the end of these seven steps, what you ultimately get is an action plan for dealing with every failure possibility in the plant. This is what makes RCM unique. It provides a tremendous framework to foresee every possible problem and develop a plan to deal with it. With this, we conclude our discussion. See you in the next lecture.